Hey, aloha and welcome to Stan Energy Man here. Stan Osterman from the Hawaii Center for Advanced Transportation Technology is coming to you at the tail end of a cough and cold. So if I start coughing in the middle of this thing, I'm going to ask for your, your forgiveness because I just can't help it. But it's been pretty good for the last half hour, so I should be able to get through the rest of the show. Anyway, we have a guest today, Chris McWinney. He started a company called Millennium Rain several years ago. And he um, has, a, a, I think, a brilliant plan for bringing hydrogen to the life of as many people that want to get involved in it. He scales his equipment more towards the small end. And uh, hydrogen equipment scales, whether you're making hydrogen or whether you're making electricity from hydrogen fuel cells, it scales up and down really, really well. Um, from real tiny you know, desktop scale and educational models all the way up to megawatt scale uh, production equipment. So anyway, he's, he's chosen to kind of stay on the lower end, the homeowner end, and uh, small company and industry end. And uh, he can go pretty large, but he, he's got some great equipment. We haven't talked to him for a while, but um, one, of his, the sh one of the shows we featured his equipment on is actually one of the best showing um, videos we have on YouTube in our series. So... Anyway, Chris, welcome to the show. I'm glad to have you on again. It's coming in live from Ohio. Hey, thank you, Stan. Appreciate the opportunity to share with the folks what we're doing. And I, I appreciate um, the good judgment you have of putting one of your wife's artwork behind you because she does some great stuff. And uh, I'm glad, <laughs> glad to see you kind of brought her in there subtly. And um, so first of all, before we get into business, how was your vacation? I know you just came back from vacation. Oh, man, we just spent some time in Turks and Caicos, and uh, turquoise water just goes from uh, uh, to the horizon. As far as you can see, it's unbelievable. So, yeah, we had a great time. Yeah, I'd, I'd jump all over you, but I know you spent plenty of time in Hawaii, so you're just trying to yeah. spread the wealth a little bit. Yeah, I've been there 28 times since I met you guys in 2013. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, you're always welcome, Hunter. So tell us what's new with Millennium Rain and uh, what's going on in your world in Ohio. Well, we uh, most recent news that we have is is that we just recently received a certificate of attestation from CSA Group, which is a third-party nationally recognized testing laboratory on um, uh, five of our hydrogen uh, scalable hydrogen fueling appliances and six of our um, electrolyzers. So, in both instances, we're the first company in the world to have accomplished that. Uh, to an interim requirement 3-18 on the scalable hydrogen fueling appliances and um, interim requirement 4-14 uh, on the uh, uh, electrolyzer. So that's a big deal. It allows us to get these, uh, this equipment uh, to people uh, for um, uh, in, in, an easy, in an easy fashion where the authorities having jurisdiction would notice that CSA stamp is on product and therefore um, it has been vetted and tested and meets all the codes and standards necessary to for safe operation so it's a big right. deal and millennium ring focuses on uh, alkaline electrolyzers so splitting clean water into hydrogen and oxygen that's the oxygen right. go keeps the hydrogen and stores it up under pressure right now most here equipment's 5,000 psi pressure and then it's available yes. for putting in vehicles, putting in forklifts, mm -hmm. putting in uh, cooking with, you can even cook yep. with it and stuff like that. So um, you're kind of on the hydrogen production side, correct? Right, hydrogen production. We do, there's five things that you need to build hydrogen fueling infrastructure. Uh, and you first, you have to make the hydrogen, then you have to purify it, you have to compress it, you have to store it, uh, and you have to be able to dispense it. Um, and we do all of those things and package them into uh, a single product that is plug and play um, and ready to go. Yeah, we've, we've been fortunate out here. We have two of uh, Chris's um, units in HCAT. Right now, they're, they're actually, one of them is in operation out at the Hickam Air Force Base. We had it in our Cook Street station before we moved to Richard Street. But uh, it's actually back online, Chris, and we, we've actually been running it from time to time. The other one they were yeah. waiting to install with the Hawaii Air National Guard 
with one of our weapons loaders out there that runs off hydrogen. But um, yeah. kind of give everybody an idea of where your equipment fits in the big scheme of things of uh, making hydrogen more of a common uh, quantity in the, in the energy world. Well, it's, uh, first of all, hydrogen is a great way to store energy from renewable energy like wind and sun. Uh, uh, and uh, when the wind and sun is not, uh, the sun's not shining and the wind's not blowing, uh, hydrogen is a great form to, uh, to store the energy in. It's actually less costly than batteries. Um, it really scales well in a megawatt scale and utility scale. Um, and uh, now it will not replace batteries because you still need to have a battery in the system, but you don't need as many batteries. Uh, and you can, uh, the, the cost per kilowatt hour is dramatically lower uh, when you do the math on uh, hydrogen storage than it is batteries. All right. So what is the largest system you guys plan to be manufacturing? How big do you plan to go um, right now? Well, currently we have uh, a system that is uh, scheduled to, to built for uh, four megawatts. Um, and uh, so that system would produce 2,000 kilograms a day. Wow. Um, but yeah, so, so big. <laughs> So you're covering everything from like one or two kilograms a day up to uh, that, what do you say, four megawatts will do? A thousand kilograms a day? Yeah, 2,000 2, wow. kilograms a day. So, so yeah, the building blocks are uh, uh, one kilogram, two kilogram, four kilogram, uh, and then 12 kilogram, 16 kilogram, 32 kilogram, and then 160 kilogram building blocks and okay. you can build from take any of those and add them together and get to any percent you know any level per day you need okay and what kind of customer do you have out there i know you have them around the world so why don't you tell us about some of the customers that you have right now yeah we have we we we, we our longest furthest away one we did uh was in dubai and that was for a, a hydrogen streetcar and then we had one in, uh, we've got one there at Hickam Air Force Base, and you've got another one there. And then we have one on the Big Island uh, at Blue Planet. Uh, we also have another small electrolyzer on the Big Island at a gentleman's house. Uh, we have one in Southern California. We have one in Northern California at a winery. We've got one at um, uh, the Navy uh, and, uh, the, in Washington, D.C. at the uh, Naval Research Laboratory. Uh, and we've got one at Ohio State University Center for Automotive Research. Okay, were you involved in the Costa Rica bus project with a with a US Hybrid? Maybe, maybe uh, sure. Well, you? we're still that's still under works. We we ha we were contacted and um, okay. sent them a quote. I think we're okay. Waiting for finances arranged. And do you do you partner with any particular companies? On the fuel cell side, do you, do you like have any uh, vehicle companies or anybody that you're kind of partnering up with and doing work with? Well, I sit on uh, codes and standards committees on the Society of Automotive Engineers, which is SAE, uh, also on uh, CSA, Canadian Standards, uh, and um, and then also uh, I, I, I not on the committee, but I've actually been to the meetings for NFPA two for hydrogen codes and standards. So I interact with a lot of the big gas companies and the uh, OEMs, car companies, and are very familiar with them uh, and deal with them on a regular basis um, and in, 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 those, in those atmospheres. Okay. Well, right now, a lot of the companies, when they, when they ask me, you know, what does it cost to build a station, I have to give them the unfortunate answer of it depends. Depends on whether you're going to have liquid hydrogen provided from steam reform natural gas. Depends on if you're doing production on site from solar. Depends on if you're going to do high pressure and um, 5,000 5, uh, PSI. So it depends on how you're going to do it, but <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Knew this was going to happen. <coughs> You've got a plan, though, to, um, to do a little different model. 
Why don't you start talking about that model you want? Yeah, so uh, this would be a good time to bring up my first slide there, and I'll go through that and uh, before we get to the break, and then we'll do, finish it off after the break. So uh, Millennium Rain Energy, uh, we believe, is the future when it comes to changing the world's hydrogen from uh, to hydrogen from, uh, from wind and solar. And uh, what we're trying, what we're going to announce is, is that we're going to build the world's first transcontinental hydrogen highway from Los Angeles to New York. And uh, so uh, the, go ahead and turn the slide there, and we're going to talk about how we're going to do that. Um, build global hydrogen fueling infrastructure. Uh, currently, it's important to understand that a lot of countries are, 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 are doing this. Um, the vehicles uh, range that they're putting uh, in, in, into semi-tractors and buses and forklifts and boats and drones and light-duty vehicles and cars and SUVs and pickup trucks are all out on the market and being fueled. As a matter of fact, we fueled most of those. Of, of the stations that fuel light-duty, Certain forces, mainly the OEMs, have guided those stations to be able to dispense hydrogen at 70 MPA or 10,000 PSI and be able to uh, complete the full fill in three to five minutes. And this results in a driving range within 300 miles for most offerings. Um, this makes uh, the station cost extremely high uh, due to the lack of components existing in scale like fittings, storage tanks, compressors, nozzles, sensors, and chillers that are all required to dispense hydrogen at such high pressure and at such high speed. Go ahead and change the slide, please. Uh, the current model for uh, station deployment in California is generously paying for up to 80% of the cost of the station. And, um, and, and so the stations uh, have now been erected using a pool of funds uh, and some also coming from Toyota to help subsidize these stations. And, uh, the stations are mostly all 200 kilogram a day dispensing and usually are placed where there are not enough cars in the beginning to sell all the gas that they make. Um, so the stations are very expensive, averaging $3 million for the total cost. Enough data has been collected by a company that has gotten a lot of this funds from California and they've determined and announced to everyone at a meeting I was at a couple of years ago that they were going to need to have, be able to dispense 500 kilograms a day in order to make money. And, it, and when you bump up from the 200 kilograms a day to the 500 kilograms a day, now the station costs $4 million instead of $3 million. And it would take about 1,000 cars in a five-mile radius to have enough demand to dispense at the full weekly capacity, 142 cars a day filling once a week. And so uh, 80%, the 80% subsidy that, that, that the, you know, is, is masking the fact that the financial model does not work to support long-term deployment of new hydrogen fueling infrastructure as they're trying to do it now. So, and how do you justify building stations to open a new territory at this cost? And what will we do with the pool of funds that California and other countries are putting up so generously and, and they're providing, and what happens when that stops? So a new way must be found to grow infrastructure organically with, without government money that will provide profit at every level, level, the consumer, the station owner, and the station manufacturer. Next slide, please. So um, the new approach to an existing challenge is the um, fittings, the storage tanks, compressors, nozzles, sensors, all that are required uh, to build uh, 35 MPA or 5,000 PSI uh, have all been available for years at scale and are already available at a third of the cost of the 10,000 PSI equipment. MREs built, patented, trademarked, and received a certificate of attestation to IR3-18 on 10 different scalable hydrogen fueling appliances. This means that these products are ready to go to market and have been verified by an internationally recognized third-party laboratory as meeting all the necessary codes and standards as a factory manufactured product. These stations differ greatly from the stations that are being built around the world today in that they only fill the cars to 5,000 PSI and they will uh, fill a little slower because they don't have pre-chillers to cool the hydrogen down prior to dispensing it into the cars. So this makes the fill time about eight minutes versus five minutes. And so that's a little give up. And the car 
travels about 150 to 160 miles instead of 320 miles. So that's a little give up. You'd have to fill up more often. But even though these smaller, or less sophisticated stations that we're supplying uh, seem to have a marketing disadvantage, their overall cost is such that they can be deployed while making a great business case for all other parties involved. Yeah, so these Chris, stations. Let me uh, let me interrupt ahead. there and say that um, just for for example, and you were talking three and four million dollars for a station uh, under the traditional model. The uh, unit that we have that was two kilograms a day and had eight kilograms mm -hmm. of storage was only it only cost us uh, one hundred twenty thousand dollars. So we're talking a That's huge right. savings. And when you start to again, as I said early on, hydrogen scales really well from real tiny to huge. So if you go at this up uh, this uh, challenge with the equipment that you're designing that's so much uh, more affordable, you can put it in and scale with the market as it grows. And then when you that's want right. to get to that bigger scale and go with the 10,000 PSI pressure, you can. But, you know, right. in Hawaii, 150 miles, that's no range anxiety on this island, that's for sure. You can go that's around right. the island that's about right. four times. So That's so right. It's It'll perfect. Take five stations. It would yeah. only take five stations to cover the whole big island. Yeah. You know, well, we're going to so, take a quick yeah. break here, Chris, and we'll be back in 60 seconds, and uh, we'll talk All some right. more about your, your highway plan. Thanks. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just going to scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m., on Friday afternoons, and then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up, and please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Yukari Kunisue, the host of Konnichiwa Hawaii, Japanese yeah. talk show on Think Tech Hawaii. Konnichiwa oh. Hawaii is all Japanese broadcast show. And it's streamed live on ThinkTech at 2 p.m. every other Monday. Thank you so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. I'm Yukari Kunise. Mahalo. Okay. Hey, welcome back to Stan Energy Man on Lunch Hour with Chris McWinney calling in from Ohio, of all places. It's a little town, though. He just came back from the uh, Caribbean, vacationing a little bit, eating, eating some sun someplace besides Hawaii. But we won't hold that against <laughs> him. He pl spends plenty of time in Hawaii. So, Chris, we're talking about the, the magic of this, this using your equipment, which, yeah, it has some limitations. You're not going up to the high pressures, but I can tell you, but as much as I've, I've gotten into hydrogen and loving it and studying it, the one thing that continues to plague us is the cost of high compression. You go to 10,000 PSI to store it, to, to compress, just through the compression itself. It's, it's really energy intensive. So we're taking a lot of energy to squish the hydrogen into a tank, and we're not getting a whole lot back out of it. So going to 5,000 PSI, to cover basically what would be the same as a battery plug-in market um, with a different kind of electric vehicle using hydrogen to make electricity instead of batteries to store electricity. It, it covers the same and a little bit more, probably even a little bit more range than some of the battery plug-ins, but it does it right. Uh, at the right, the right scale cost-wise. So let's get back into your, your charts. And it's faster to fill. I mean, you can fill up in uh, eight minutes rather than eight hours. Right. Um, so yeah, uh, what I was saying was is that uh, uh, we've installed these all around the world, and um, so uh, we have um, uh, uh, these stations uh, and products uh, can be used in other applications like forklifts, buses, semis, uh, drones, cell phone towers microgrids and islands wanting to achieve energy independence. And they're perfectly suited in these markets, even though it's at 5,000 PSI, because they already have those type of tanks in them. So there's many markets that, besides the car market, that they actually fit perfectly in. Yeah. And so um, MRE has installed these uh, around the world and we fueled the Toyota, the Honda, the GM, 
We fueled street cars, light carts, drones, buses, forklifts, and fuel cell systems. We even fueled some fuel for Super Bowl 50 to run a fuel cell for the Super Bowl city. Uh, NASA uses it at the uh, Mars Habitat on the Big Island. And Helco Power Company even used some of our hydrogen from Blue Planet here a while back uh, to, to restock their hydrogen that they use to cool the, uh, the generator. Uh, so, right, um, right, that was right before Hurricane Lane was supposed to hit here. And yeah. all of our barge shipping stopped so the Hawaiian Electric Light Company on the Big Island couldn't get hydrogen to cool their, their turbines. And they That's needed right. some from Oahu, so they got some from their unit up at Blue Planet Research. That's right. So and also, uh, Chris, believe- um, besides the tanks, there's also the J2601. A lot of people don't realize, even though we're talking about only um, filling at 5,000 PSI, those same filling nozzles can connect to the high pressure, but they only fill right. to 5,000 PSI. So even okay. though, you, you know, it's not a standard for that car, like the 10,000 PSI, the nozzle will still fit on a Mariah. It'll still fit on a Honda and a Hyundai and everything, correct? That's right. Yes, that's right. So there's no restriction there. Um, it won't go the other way. You can't take a 10,000 PSI and put on a 5,000 because it won't fit, but it right. will fit in the opposite direction for safety reasons. Okay. okay. So um, see the next slide. So uh, here's a product that we've got that we believe is a breakthrough in H2 fueling infrastructure. And uh, uh, this is a three-way winning performer in financials. This one actually does 10,000 PSI, and, but it has no pre-chill, so its fueling is a little slower. Um, and it has IRD communications with the car as it's filling. And in this case, the manufacturer can make enough money to grow organically and continue to produce this breakthrough product. Fueling station owner can make about 9.35% return on their investment and increase by increasing the cost of the hydrogen to the nozzle of $8.38 per kilogram by just $2 a kilogram. And that $2 a kilogram spread on the profit gives them that 9.35% return. And then they can sell the hydrogen owner to the, ca- the hydrogen to the car owners at basically $10.38 a kilogram. And the current price in California is $16 a kilogram. You can see such a big difference there. At that $10.38 a kilogram, fuel cell vehicle owner is actually paying about $3.71 per gallon of gas equivalent, less than the current gasoline prices in California and Hawaii. So for the very first time ever, you have a product that all three can make money and you can sell hydrogen cheaper than gasoline. So every uh, possible um, uh, uh, you know, uh, objection about why you know change into hydrogen it has disappeared and this is only within the last four months when we figured out how to do this so um go to the next slide so this new approach will give you a comparison if you look on the left you've got the way they currently do it that one big dot represents one big station that would cover a five mile circle territory and you'd need 142 cars a day being able to fill up there, which means you need over a thousand cars in that area because they only need to fill up once a week. So, um, uh, and that would dispense 500 kilograms a day, uh, and the station would cost four million dollars. So that same four million dollars, you can put five, uh, eight of the previous stations that you saw at a half million dollars a piece in that same territory. Now you have eight nozzles. One of the things that they're running into in California is they got the station up, and the ones that are actually busy. They have a line of, you know, 15, 20 cars sometimes waiting to get fuel. So that five-minute fuel time they're trying to get goes to like 25 minutes when you got to wait in line to get, get the fuel because they exactly. don't have enough nozzle. So, so this, this, this new concept, and, this, and these are actually 10,000 PSI stations too. Um, so the fueling is going to take about 18 minutes instead of, uh, instead of five minutes. But, um, you know... All we have to do is add a little bit of pre-chilling to that, and we can get that down to about 10 minutes. So, um, so anyways, next slide. And when you say pre-chilling, you don't have to get it super, super cold, but like they, they make some liquid oxygen um, cryocoolers that are really small scale, and that would chill your hydrogen down plenty um, to get it to where the, you can get it uh, to the high pressures and keep the temperature c- controlled, right? Yeah. So. Uh, 
you basically what you need to do is the, as you're filling the tank, the, pot, the hydrogen that's going into the tank uh, through a Jules Thompson effect, it heats up heats the tank up. and the tank's not allowed to exceed 85 C uh, mm -hmm. or um, that's bad for the tank. So um, uh, you have to, by pre-chilling the hydrogen down to minus 20 C to minus 40 C, you can get uh, the speed up and not get the heat up. So that's right. why they do it so they can speed up the time. But you can still fill with ambient hydrogen. It just takes a little bit longer. Okay. But then you don't have a free chiller to buy, and the cost goes down, and the operations and maintenance are much less. So let's go to the next slide. Um, so what we're going to do with this is we're going to build the transcontinental hydrogen highway. And this year, historians are celebrating something that had a large enough impact on the growth of the United States of America that 150 years later is still worthy of remembrance. That event was the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad. The first Transcontinental Railroad was a 1912 mile continuous rail line constructed between 1863 and 1869 that connected the existing Eastern US rail network from Omaha and Council Bluffs, Iowa with the Pacific Coast at Oakland, Long Wharf and San Francisco Bay. The new transcontinental hydrogen highway will be from Los Angeles, California to New York and will be built in one year after it's publicly announced, uh, which this is a slide I, I wrote about a month ago. We've actually advanced the announcement up um, to, since I'm talking about it now, I guess you could say it's today, but we're really going to do a big, big hoopla about it on Earth Day. And uh, again, on May 3rd, I'm speaking in Washington, D.C., and we're going to be, that's going to be a live broadcast. Uh, and at, a, at an environmental meeting. And um, so we're going to be really saying it's announced then. But um, the Transcontinental Highway is a conti contiguous network of hydrogen fueling stations on an interstate highway system across a continental landmass. And uh, fueling stations at different oceans um, or continental borders. Uh, the first route will mostly follow Interstate 70. And the trip from Los Angeles to California, uh, Los Angeles, California to New York would include uh, fuel cell vehicles from all three manufacturers and any new releases since then. And it'll be a huge media event when that opens and we're going to have a race. So cars will leave and they'll have a time posted on them and they're not allowed to exceed a certain speed limit and they'll go across the United States. And, and then we're also going to have some electric cars in there too, some all electrics like the Tesla and others. And that's going to really demonstrate to everyone how much quicker it is and more convenient it is to have hydrogen than battery electric because they'll, you know, it takes so much longer to stop and charge uh, for the electric than it would the hydrogen. And so we think this is going to be a monumental and historical event. And um, it's going to cost about $5 million to build that. In contrast, um, it would take $60 million to build it the way they're currently building it. And um, so there's going to be a glut of used fuel cell cars piling up in California because they're saying they're going to put 50,000 more cars on the road by 2022, uh, Toyota and other manufacturers are. And so they've got such great incentives on buying the new cars in Zev states that you really wouldn't want to buy a, a, a used car. So um, we're going to create a dealership network. It's going to import these used cars into the non-ZEV states and create the market for the hydrogen that we build these, um, uh, this network of hydrogen stations around. So go ahead and change the slide, please. Yeah, we're, co we're coming up on so 30 uh, minutes here, Chris, so we're going to have to wrap it up shortly, but um, this is really exciting news. So here you can see the blue line on the U.S. Uh, uh, the travel, that it will travel. Go ahead to the next one. And this is our certificate of attestation that shows that we got from CSA on these stations that we're going to be putting out there, showing that they meet all the codes and standards. Next slide. And this is the first station that will go out. It's our Model 200. It does four kilograms a day, and it's a small plug-and-play system. It can be installed in an hour and be up and running. Go to the next slide. And when people get enough cars coming to that one that it's overrunning it, then we put in this next one here. This is an example of one we have in Sonoma, California at Stone Edge Farms microgrid, and it's a winery. And that one does 12 kilograms a day. And there you can see a Toyota Mirai uh, that they've been fueling up there for three years. Go to the next slide. And then finally, you come in with a Mega 4 TA70, which this will do 64 kilograms a day. And this is the one that has 
the really good numbers on it. All of them make money right out of the gate, but it's real small in the beginning for the littler ones. But, they, but when you get to this level, it makes a really nice investment. We go to the next slide. And this is the last slide. So first you build a uh, uh, phase of one of the transcontinental highway. Then you import used cars from California and New York into the network of the transcontinental station cities to create a demand for hydrogen. Then from those first cities, you branch out with strategic placements of hundreds and then thousands of small scale hydrogen fueling infrastructure units. And then you continue to expand those locations that are growing in hydrogen demand and relocate those units that are in low locations with low demand. And then it's really nice because you can pick these up and move them real quick if it's not working, you can just relocate it. Um, you collect data and tracking information and continue to refine and improve the technology and customer experience. And then we're gonna expand all sites with high demand to maximum on-site production levels. That could be as much as 128 kilograms a day. And as that continues to climb, we're then also going to build megawatt scale, utility scale hydrogen systems called uh, hydrogen harvesters. And these hydrogen harvesters then will be able to truck hydrogen into those existing stations that we've built through this scalable hydrogen infrastructure network uh, opportunity. And then we're going to be able to actually drive trucks that actually run on hydrogen that they're carrying uh, while they're delivering it, uh, these, uh, this extra hydrogen made from wind and solar uh, directly and backfill those stations that are, are, are in high demand. So uh, next slide. And that's it. Thank you very much. All right. Hey, Chris. Well, thanks for being on the show today and, uh, and explaining your uh, groundbreaking project. And uh, we're really looking forward to this thing taking, uh, taking uh, hold and, and growing. In fact, you know, just the fact that you can come close to breaking even, even at the smallest scale. Um, yeah. I think there's going to be people adopting this just to get the hydrogen out there. They're not yeah. interested in making a fortune on this. They just want yep. to see the hydrogen in place. So I see right. that happening even in here in Hawaii. So thanks again yeah. for being on the show today. And, and we'll have you back again um, right after kickoff, maybe. And we'll talk more about the, the project as it goes forward. So thanks okay. to everyone for joining us today. And uh, being with Chris McWinney here on Think Tech Hawaii. Thanks to Robert and Cindy in the studio for making things happen. We'll see you next week. Aloha. Aloha.